Hi guys, Rich Bassini from RJBassini.com. Coming to you today to just talk to you about um, prepping my stuff. Uh, so right, listen, in this particular case, I'm prepping for this, i get it up here, this ceramic light. And, you know, if people are ever wondering how I send my items out or want to get an idea or how to send some items like this out, um, I just want to give you a little insight of what I'm doing with this here. This is heavy. This is a heavy piece. It's all ceramic. It's got brass top and a brass bottom here. It's going to be a little challenging if you don't do it right. So some people might say, well, what's so challenging about shipping out a ceramic lamp like this, you know? But it can become challenging if you don't properly, you know, package it right. So I'm going to put this down over here, and I'm going to show you what I did so far. The only reason why I started ahead of time is um, I just want to, I don't want to waste too much time. So now if you're going to ask me about the supplies you see here, See here, I got all different types of shapes of uh, styrofoam. Big piece here. I got block stuff. Okay, um, big blocks, little blocks, stuff like this size here. And um, a lot of these blocks, a lot of this stuff here is going to be used for when I have to ship out printers. Okay, um, I'm going to use this here to go around the sides of it and you know pack it up. And I'm going to do like, you know, sequel shots. So I'm not going to sit there and show you, you know, I'm not going to take the time. I'm not telling you I'm going to take the time. But I'm going to show you on time lapse what I do, how I'm doing it. Uh, first off, with a block like this here, and again, folks, don't ask where I got them. I, did, I, I mean, um, where these came from. These came from a relative of mine. They ordered some stuff, and a lot of packaging material came with it. And it was given to me for free. I didn't have to buy this stuff, which is good. That's a plus on my part. Um, so... You know, and my, my relative asked me, um, do you want this stuff? Could you use it? I said, sure. If I go, I ship stuff out, fragile things. And I said, yeah. You know, at first you're thinking, like, what can I do with a big block like this, a big block of styrofoam? You know, if you get like a scissor, a, a, scissor, a big saw, you can saw it. Very messy, though. Very messy. Um, I'm going to try to use these in whole entirety. I'm not going to cut them up because I have done that in the past. I was cutting them up with a knife and, you know, and trying to make it thinner. and something like that to make, you know, to use... Uh, you know, to craft it around certain fragile items. So what I did with this one here is, this is the block, right? What I did was, just to give you a little insight of what I did, I took this here and I laid it on the table like this, right? Now, you see the lamp is bigger than the, of course, it's bigger than the um, styrofoam, right? Okay. That's okay. What I did was, after I pressed down on it very gently without breaking that, I got the impression around here from the base. So what I did was I took a utility knife and I wouldn't suggest kids to do this. Of course your parents would do have to do this or whoever, you know, I wouldn't you know you gotta be careful with these here. And I scored around it with the knife, right? And then what I did is I took a letter opener because it's semi dull, but it could still hurt you. It could still poke you. And I knurled away at it. Okay? But I had it over the garbage can and these little styrofoam pieces you got to make sure your vacuum clean is uh, readily handy handy because you're going to have to be sucking up all this uh, excess styrofoam. And I knurled away at it to accommodate the base. Now, you might have to play around with it at one point. This so far looks somewhat pretty good. Okay, it looks like it's going to seat in there good. Okay. So now, I got to move, I just got to, I got to cut, cut it down a little more because around the sides, the um, case, you know, the over here, the casing, or I should say the mount where the, brat, where the wall mount is, it's still a little high. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to knurl at it, you know, with this, with a, with a uh, litter opener. Now, a lot of people say, I'm not going to go through all of this here. I'm just going to, I would just, me, if, so, if somebody else was doing it, I say me, I would just tape it on the back of it and leave it at that. The reason why I'm doing it this way, folks, is because I want to make sure, I want to make sure that base fits in there good. And because when I get that on here, when I get this thing seated right, I'm going to tape the ceramic lamp onto it. So what I'm going to do is, again, very messy. So make sure you have a garbage can readily, you know, available. And I knurl away at it like this. It does not be perfect inside. We're not we're not sculpturing. We're just trying to make uh, an area here where we could, you know, put seat the base in. Okay. So. Once you get away with that there, you know, you keep knurling away with it, and you're going to have to pick at it. You guys might find a better way of doing it, and that's fine. You know, wherever you find a better solution to do it, that's great. 
But for me, this is how I'm doing it. Okay. So I narrowed away a little at it. You can see in the video, you can probably see where, you know, I'm trying to make that shape. Okay. It's a little off centered, but that's okay. We're going to take the lamp again. And you're going to play around with it. You're going to make sure it seats it. Now, it's not going to go all the way down because if you look, the ceramic part is keeping it away. But the most important thing is it's locked in here. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to try to figure out once that's in there, I'm going to tape that around. I might use one of these to go around the edges to protect it. Okay, I'm not sure how exactly I'm going to do it, but I'm thinking somewhere along the line, something like this. You know, again, I got these for nothing, and it's very big and very helpful. So I might do something like this to protect the you know, to go around it. Okay, we want to protect the ceramics because we want to make sure. If this thing does get jostled in a box, the ceramic part is and not damaged. Okay, what I'm going to do, folks, is I'm going to do this like in a time lapse thing. So I'm going to well, time lapse meaning I'm going to pause the camera, do what I have to do, and then come back again and show you what the re end result was. I'm not because I don't want to. I don't want to bore you just watching me cut and measure or whatever, and then go back and forth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the the cam now, the webcam. I want to know, you know. So there should be no reason why that this arrives to the buyer damaged, okay? All right. Um, I'm going to fix it up. I'm just trying to show you this, what it's going to look like. And what I do is just to, just to make everything all one thing here, what I'll do is I'll put a piece of cardboard here and tape everything up here, just run it across, just to keep everything intact from the styrofoam shifting back and forth. And then just close it up like this, tape it. Do the shake test on it, make sure nothing's bouncing around in it, which it shouldn't be. Because in, when you look, if you looked in here when I was, well, you didn't see when I was first doing it, I had wedged, I had wedged styrofoam, I'll take these pieces out, I had wedged styrofoam in the corners over here. This is tight in here. And I'm going to show you something. It's very daring to do this here. Okay. Hope it don't fall. That's how, see how wedged is it? It's wedged. All right, now you probably said, oh, he's holding it. I'll take this out to you and show you. Okay, no trick mirrors, no smoke and mirrors, folks. See, look, that's it. Okay, so, yeah, um, that's how I do my, that's how I'm going to be doing the shipping. That's how this is going to go out. Um, I'm not going to leave it like this, of course, but you see how I'm wedging this in right now? See how it's getting stuck in there? The other piece is holding it in. See that? How it's being wedged in there? There's a piece of styrofoam holding that up. I gotta move. I might have to trim this down a little. But if I trim it down, then it'll fit in there perfect. And it's okay. I'd rather be in a little tight spot. And then when I when I close this all up, I put the styrofoam back in here again. Um, like this here. Uh, this bad boy should be well tacked. It should be well in place. I put this over here like this, going across. Just run clear tape over just to keep all this stuff from shifting. It's not going to make a difference anyway. So you can see it right now by putting it in here like this. Even if I just left it there, which I'm not going to. Right? I mean, nice. And, and I always make sure the sides are tight. Okay? So you want to make sure the sides are tight when you're ta taping these boxes up. See? Okay? There you go. So you don't have to, like I said, that's how I ship my stuff up. Okay? That's how I ship it out. Um, it, does it look appealing? Well, you know what? The buyer gets this here. If they like it and they keep it, all this will get discarded. It's no big deal. I don't care. People might say, well, you used a lot of styrofoam in there to, uh, to make your point. But you know something? I'd rather be overpacked than underpacked. Okay? If the buyer was to get this and say, geez, you know, <laughs> you really went out of town packaging, you could, you could say whatever you want to say. I don't really care. As long as it got to you, in one piece and not in pieces, that's all that matters to me. And if I really want to make it really nice and look nice and preppy, whatever, I could take a box like this, not that I would, and sometimes I do that, and what I would do is, I'm not going to use the post office box, I'm just using it as an example. What I would do is I would cut this down to size and place it over there and hold everything in. Everything be all held in nice and, you know, tight and snuggy, you know. Uh, not that I use this one, but it would be something like this here, right? I would take a box like this, not the post office box, of course, 
and just put it like that, hold everything in one place. But not use their property. That's the post office property. You don't, you don't use their stuff to do that. That's how I do it. But in this particular case, I'm just going to take the cardboard, tape it up, and that's what we got going on here. Okay? So now you see, folks, how I prep my stuff when it comes to uh, fragile things like that. If you think this video helped out in any way, uh, you like it, it gave you, you gave you some little insight. I'm not saying everybody's going to do this. I'm not saying you're going to you know, get a block of styrofoam and take an X-Acto knife and uh, a letter opener and start chiseling away at it to send stuff out. But let me tell you something. Uh, I'd rather be more safe than sorry when it comes to shipping fragile things like this out. Because let's face it, if you don't, it's going to come back to bite you. And how it's going to come back to bite you is when the buyer gets this and says, I received your item today. It was all broken up. I want a refund. You're out of money because this here, let me tell you something with this, with this ceramic lamp. I didn't get this for nothing. Um, I don't know if I got it half off or not, but I paid a nice dollar for it. Okay, A decent buck for it, considering. And um, I want to move it out get it out of my inventory. I have, a, I have one more lamp like this, but not like this exactly. It's a bra It's all brass. This is ceramic. Once the lamps go, unless I come across them, and they're new. That's the only reason why I bought them. These were pre-owned. I wouldn't buy them. Um, once they go, I don't know if I'm going to buy these stuff because I don't know if I want to go through all this already. See, right now, I, I don't mind doing it because I got the styrofoam. <laughs> now, some people may say, <clears throat> suppose you didn't have the styrofoam. How would you do it then? Now, how do you do it? Well, simple. What I would do is, in a case like this, where I didn't have the styrofoam to package and thing like this, the only reason why I'm doing it this is because I have all the styrofoam for now, but a lot of it would be gone before you know it. Um, what I would do is take a box, wrap it in a box, put it in another box, put, put card, here's a little trick I do, folks. Um, let me just show you really quick. I could. I think I got rid of all the cardboard, right? Maybe I didn't. Well, let me just get a piece over here. What I do, folks, is I get a long, let's say I get a long piece like this here, or a piece something similar to this here, like this, okay? What I would do is, I've done this before in the past. I make like corners like this, right? I tape them up, or not even tape them up. And what I would do is I put them in the corner of each box I make. So what I would do is I cave this thing in the middle. I do this like when I want to sell printers. And what happens is, and I leave it like that, gives a little flexibility, takes the void out, right? You put them in the corner of the boxes, right? Let's say, let's say this is a printer, right? This is a lamp in this case. Let's say it's a printer. And it's a four-corner printer like that one I have here. It's very sleek. I'm going to show you the video on that as well. And what I do is I would put, if I didn't have styrofoam, I put these in a the corner, right? First I make a base. I'll show you how I do the base. And what I do is I would put these in the corner on all four corners. Then I fill the inside with paper. I stuff paper in it when it's in the box. Okay, you got to figure now. It's stuffed in a box. And I'm stuffing newspaper in there. Enough to give it like a little buffer. So if it does take a little impact, the paper will give it away. It won't be so stiff, you know. So I put I fill these with paper on all four corners. That's why I saved the, that's why I saved cardboard. It's, there's, a, there's, there's a method to the madness with me, okay. I, I do these here for a reason. I save the card, not because I'm a junk picker or a hoarder, but that's why I save it. So what I do is after I do that, after I make the base, I'll show you how I make the base on the printer. I'm going to my prep the printer up and show you how I do that. Then I would do it all four corners. Now the bottom already has it. The base has already got the cushion. I always go with the one, one inch rule. That's my, my thing, one inch or one inch, half an inch rule. In other words, you're going to have about a half inch in certain cases, like for the printer, at least a half, an inch, an inch and a half of packing. Okay, where in other words, if it does, God forbid, drop, it's not going to be right on, right on, it's not going to be on, you know, metal on metal type of type of thing, you know what I'm saying? It's going to have, it's going to have a cushion. And I'll show you what I do with that, how I do it. Um, and then what I do is, when it comes to the rest of it, I put, then I get bigger pieces, depending on the height of the box, because you have to have, you got to have enough packing, you have to have the box high enough, high enough where you could put packing around it. I would take another box, cut it to that length, and do the same thing. Only now it's a bigger scale. So in other words, for a little thing like this, it would be a lot bigger now. And I go the length of the box, I put it around that. I have to show you one day what I'm talking about. 
And I've been shipping stuff like that out for my printers for the longest time, and I had no problem. Knock on wood, where it came back, all well, got to the buyer broken. If anything, when it got back to me, it came back damaged. As I said in one of my videos, uh, I had something where the buyer said the bank didn't pack it like I pack it, and when it came back, it was a printer. It came back, it was damaged. There's I have it on. Matter of fact, I have it right now. It's got to be bad. It's for parts not for sale. Uh, it's for parts not working. So you see what I'm saying, folks. So that's what I'm trying to say. You know, when it comes to packaging, um, if you read some of my feedbacks, you'll say some people. Not every single person that left me feedback say, "Oh, well packaged, well packaged, well packaged." No, I'm not saying that. But the people that do appreciate my packaging or how it arrived to their house or a place of business, whatever, uh, they will say, "Oh, yeah, no, arrived nice, well packaged." I'm not expecting to get kudos on everything I send. I'm not saying, "Well, this guy is the greatest ship around." He sends his stuff out. I put, but I do put my time into it. Okay, I do put time in. I do take my time. I do my due diligence to make sure it's going to get to the buyer, as I always say, in one piece, not pieces. If this lamp gets to the buyer and it's destroyed, I want to know what courier. Well, first, it's with the U.S. Uh, the U.S. Postal Service going to send that priority anyway. They'll be insured. I want to know how it got damaged. I want them to explain to me, uh, yeah, when a guy was driving, he had the door open on the truck, which he won't, and the thing fell out, and the car ran it over or hit it, you know. Or it came off the conveyor belt, and it dropped three feet, and it landed on a corner, and it damaged it. There should be no reason why this should get broken. There should be no reason why it should get broken, okay. And once it's, and once it's all shipped out, the other thing I want to talk to you guys is, um, I don't know if you guys do it or not. I do it, again, because I'm frugal. As you know, people who follow me, I'm a frugal seller. I make my own things up, except these. This I got from my postal service. Now, when I went to my postal service, I asked for more of these here, and the lady said, uh, well, you know, it's got it on the label when you print that eBay. If you send in a, pri a priority mail, it'll send it on it. But I like to put one of these on here. It says tracked and insured. I think it gives the buyer a little peace of mind. You know, not that it matters. You know, I'm like, well, the buyer gets it. So, oh, well, okay, sent a priority mail, tracked and insured. Not that, not that it doesn't... It's not going to do anything, but at least I think it gives them a little peace of mind. You know, I might be a little comfort. Oh, at least it's insured. The other thing I do, folks, in regards to the topic with shipping, I make my own labels. I go to a website, and I type in, uh, I'll do a Google search uh, about electronics, sending electronic stuff out. You know, that, like, let's say if it's memory or something that's electronics, that shouldn't be, electro, you know, uh, in the electromagnetic fields. I printed these out on my color printer laser. Um, yeah. It says sensitive electronic devices do not chip or store near strong electromagnetic, electrostatic or electromagnetic or magnetic and radioactive <laughs> fields. And they're not sticky back. I cut them down to size. I use my clear tape, put them right on the box. I put maybe one or two. This is glass. This is going out as glass. I got two types here. Fragile glass handle with care, which I'll put on here, or please handle with care glass. I printed these up. Okay. Cut them down to size. I got three here, and I got three here. So I'll probably put two or one on each top so they see it. Okay? I'll make my own up. I'm not gonna buy them. People say, oh you can buy these things already pre-sticky. Go ahead, buy them. This is what? Maybe one sheet of paper because I take them, I, I replicate them on one sheet of paper. Okay, you might say, yeah, well, you use an ink. It doesn't matter. I don't care. Either way, it's going to cost you anyway, right? And they're on my system. And anytime I need them, boom, hit the print button. It's there. Same thing with these. I already use these. I already use this. The other things I do, I'm not going to buy labels. I'm not buying sticky gum labels. Small packages, small labels. Fragile handle with care. See? Fragile handle with care. Small ones. Big guys. Cutting down the size. Fragile handle with care. That's what's going to go on the package. Other thing is, please do not drop a crush. That's going to go on the box too. I don't want them to drop it and I don't want them to crush it. And it goes the same with the small ones. I do the same exact thing for the small ones. Please do not bend or crush. Okay, those would do not drop. Okay, here's some more small, uh, fragile labels. Here's small ones that say, please do not bend or crush. Yeah. And then I should have the other ones like that, the small ones. Maybe I, maybe I used them already. 
I have small ones like that that say, please do not drop or crush. They're probably in here somewhere, or I ran out of them, which all I got to do is just a flick of the button, and I print them out, and I got all I need. Okay? Um, you could print your own stuff out, folks. You could save yourself a lot of money if you do your own printing. You might say, well, you use an ink or something like that. Listen, if you weigh it out, I only use my ink pr jet printer for these things. This. For this. Okay. I use my ink jet printer for this. It's cheap, inexpensive. You might say, well, use an ink. I'm not worried about that part. Okay. And I got to use this. I, you know what? I got a roll of this here. The dollar store. Dollar. The roll. These. The dollar store don't sell these. This is a duck packaging tape. These, if you go to Walmart, which I'm going to go to Walmart, I'll probably pick up two more of these here. These are new. I got two more, and I try to stock up on this because I do use tape. You know, I make sure my stuff is well taped, packaged up. Um, these are about a buck and change. I think a dollar or something. I don't know. I know it's a dollar and change. I buy the craft. Buy well, the craft. The uh, brown, the brown tape, the packaging, and this here for my labels. Um, that's what I do. Um, and you know something? And you slap one of these bad boys on it, you're okay. But anyway, guys, I'm going to get back to you. Uh, I'll talk to you in my next video. I'll show you when I'm doing my printer. I'll show you how that goes. Thanks again, guys. If you like what I do with this video, please subscribe to my channel. Let's have you a subscriber. And if you got anything out of this where it helped out in any way, uh, give it a thumbs up. Let me know what you think. Okay? Thanks, guys. Talk to you soon. Hey, guys. Good to see you back again. This time I'm doing... Um, a little brief demo on it. Well, I mean, it's kind of like all the same. I'm kind of like fitting it all in one piece here. I did the one earlier with the uh, with the uh, lamp there, the uh, ceramic lamp fixture for outside. I did that one. And I kind of like jumped ahead of you guys. I'm sorry, but I kind of jumped ahead. I, I got over here the, this is an HP NV100, HP NV100 uh, laser, well, all in one printer, not a laser, all in one. And I kind of like sandwiched the two, in my previous video I showed you had styrofoam, I sandwiched these two together and I taped it up. And what I'm going to do is, I have a, a decent sized box here, alright, I got a decent sized box where I'm going to put it in. And um, I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to tape these all together to make it where it'll be, uh, how can I say, I'm going to enclose it. You know, I'm going to have it where the front sides, it's, it's going to be boxed, basically. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the sides over here and tape them up. And, you know, well, I'll show you what it looks like afterwards. So I'm going to do it now. I'm going to put the tape here. All right. I'm just going to tape it up like this for the time being. And uh, that's going to be, so when I wrap it around the sides, whoops, I think I did a little, I didn't do that right, folks, I'm sorry. Actually, I should have done it the other way. But anyway, I think you get the gist of it. Um, I'm going to keep it like this for now. And I'm going to take the other side of it, the back, and do the same thing. I'll just do it this way this time. Oh, wrong side. Bigger one here. And I'm dropping everything here. Well, I should do this on a table instead of doing it like this. And the one thing that always drives me crazy, folks, every time I get this tape like this here, it always happens to... Uh, Pull up like this on the side, always comes apart. Okay, so I'm gonna do like this with this here, take that on like that, just temporary, just to hold it in place. I think you get the gist of it, and like that there. Oh, of course, it popped out. We'll try it again with another piece of tape. All right. That's the you know, sometimes the st sometimes this tape sticks, and sometimes it don't. I can see this started already popped off already. Styrofoam is kind of hard to uh, maintain, that's why you, when you're doing this stuff here. You gotta really, you gotta really tape it up. Here's how you really gotta do this here, to be honest with you. You tape it like this, see, and this will hold it up. That's what I should have been doing in the beginning. So if you're doing it by yourself, which I am right now, um, you just tape it like this, and you hold it that way, and this way holds it in place, okay? And you get the other side, and the same thing. Okay, we're gonna tape it first, get this here. I know it seems like a lot of tape, guys. You're probably saying, well, you waste a lot of tape doing this here, but you know something? In the end, it all pays off in the end because for the simple reason is, you know, you want to make sure when you're shipping, shipping the stuff out that it gets to the buyer in one piece, I always say, not in pieces. And uh, sometimes, you know, no matter how much how much precaution you take in shipping these things out like this here, 
like you say, well, you go through a lot here, you know, just to get this here to go out, you know, to make sure. But, you know, it shows the buyer that you really care about, you know, their merchandise that you're shipping out and that you care, you know. So once you get it like that, let me get another piece over here. This styrofoam and tape don't mix them. Sometimes they stick, sometimes they don't. Okay, so what you're going to do is now after you made it like that there, again, I'm doing this here like this here. <laughs> So bear with me, folks. So now you're going to do is you're going to take the tape. Once you get it all wrapped around like this here, where tape on tape, everything everything will stick. Everything comes into play. That's the thing with the, with when you're doing the styrofoam, you're taping stuff up. Okay. So now you got this here like this. Um, you could go wrap around it once like this if you want just to make sure it stays in place. You could do that as well. Make sure, make sure though, when you're doing that, you know what the top is. So let me make sure now, because I, I got it right over here. I want to make sure that this is the top of it. Uh, yeah, I got to put a little, I'm going to put a little pen mark on top, letting me know that this is the top of it, because I want it this side up. Okay, so just put a little thing there. It's hard to write the styrofoam. Just right top if you could. All right, and then we're gonna go. We want one across that way. Now we'll go across this way here. And uh, this here. all right. This, believe it or not, this printer, even though it's sleek, I don't know what they put in it. It must have put lead in this particular one. But those who own this printer or have it, you'll know what I'm talking about. This thing's like a piece of lead. <laughs> I never seen a printer so heavy. Um, well, it could be I'm getting weak too. All right. So now I got a nice size box in here. Um, it's always a good gesture to kind of like get the excess styrofoam. I was cutting and I had the styrofoam. You know, you don't want the buyer to get the uh, box like this here. So keep it clean. I mean, the box is pre-owned. So, but you know, you want to try to have it as clean as possible. You know, I mean, I think so anyway. Okay. It's not a bad box. It's pre-owned. It's used. But, um, you know, you don't have to keep it looking like that really dirty and stuff, you know. So now we're going to take this item, this printer, and we're going to put it in this box. Now this box is a little bigger than the printer itself. It's okay. Now let me make sure, because it's a little tight going this way, so let me try the other way. Let's see. One thumb might be bigger than the other, I don't know. Okay. It seems like, well, either or, this is the... The printer, oh, the side of the box kind of like made a little oblong, as you can see here. All right, so you can see it's a little oblong. Now we got a void, okay? Now with that void, again, we're going to use these as a void, and we're going to cut it down to size. Again, with the styrofoam, be careful. Okay, be careful when you cut with this here, especially when you use this utility knife. And we could do it like this. Actually, it's probably better if you could do it this way, I guess. Or, if it doesn't go that way, you could do it like that. It gives you an idea of what it looks like. Okay? And you could tuck it in there. Uh, the same thing with the other side. Now, here's a, a piece that's a little... Oh, yeah, it's the same thing. Okay. I thought it was, I thought it was one big block that looked like a square block. The same thing. You know, if you want to measure it out, just do it the best you can. I tell you, one thing I like about styrofoam, it's light and it can detect stuff. So now you got like this here, that's how it's going to look. Okay? There's no voids on the sides except in here. Now, if you are concerned about the void, say, well, wait a minute now, that that's doesn't really good look good because you got a big void here. What you could do then is break this down and it in like this, which is probably a better way to do it anyway. Okay, you could break it down like that and fill the void that way. You know, and don't worry about it being so tight. You might say, geez, it's tight. It looks like you're having a struggle getting in there. You want it to be that way because you don't want this thing being bounced around. You know, the snugger, the better, I always say. Okay, and um, it's going to go down here like that. This one here, for some reason, you might have to add another piece here. I just don't like the way this one came out. So what I'm going to do is, just to play it on the safe side, um, I'm going to get another piece like this. 
you know, it's nice when you have stuff like this, especially when you didn't have to pay for it. <laughs> um, again, if you wanted to make a clean cut, the reason why it's sloppy on the other one is because I just broke it like that. Okay, same thing, you know, measure it out. And don't cut your hands, whatever, of course. And you can do it this way. This guy is going out tomorrow, of course. Okay, so now you've got it nice, your voids are filled in. You don't have to worry about the sides because the sides are really well packed. If I turn the printer upside down, it won't pop out because it is snug in there. Okay. So now you uh, now the question comes back again. Well, now what do you do with the top? What are you going to do with this now? Because you got a big void here. What are you going to do? You're going to leave that open like that? No, I'm not going to leave it open like that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can find some more styrofoam. It's kind of like running out of it, to be honest with you. Um, you know what? I could do is run pieces like this across there and use the box to hold it in place. I really don't need to do this here, folks. This is like really extra precaution. Um, just to give you an idea, I mean, I could do something like this or something along that line. Here. And you might be saying, well, why bother? You know, but I could do something like this here or you know, use it just to hold it down in place, like this, you know. But you got to make sure that the box is going to close. So that's the thing. You don't want it to sit up in an oblong like that. But um, that's one way of doing it. Or if you don't want to do it that way, you could just break it down in strips like this and just, you know, fill the void that way. Or what I probably will end up doing, folks, is um, doing this. This is another thing I like to do, too. I'm going to trim some of this here off here to just give this little, I think you think you guys might get an idea what I'm talking about here. I'm going to break off this stuff here, the additional stuff here, right? Now i got to put, I got to print out the packing list here and put it in here. Um, what I could do is this, because the box is bigger, right, this is protected. Um, I could put another piece of uh, styrofoam across here, which I think I will do, just to give it an extra protection here, you know. I will go maybe another piece of this here, just to get a little protection on the top, because I don't want the top to get broken in any way, so I shape or form. So I got to trim it down a little more. All right, and one in the middle, just to uh, keep it at bay here, so to speak. I think I already cut this one down like this here. Okay. So now. After I put my packing slip in there, um, I do have the person's packing slip, right? I think it's right over here. Okay, I think that is it. No, this is not it. I don't think I printed it out. Oh, you say did print it out, folks. So what I do is here is I'm going to take this slip here. This is the printer 800 here, the uh, yep, MV800. I'm going to cut this stuff out here. Don't mind me. I recycled the paper. It came out cockeyed. <laughs> But that's okay. Uh, the buyer most likely is going to throw this out, so it doesn't really matter. You can't see the floor here, but it's a mess right now. The styrofoam piece is all over the place. and Don't think I leave it like this, folks. <coughs> I'm just doing this here for video purposes. Okay, so now I got this here. Uh, I take the clear tape I got here. And I put a piece here. And a piece here. I like to get packing slips with everything I sell. So now what I'm going to do is... I'm going to take my knife, utility knife, cut it up here. All right, I'm going to cut it up here. Like that. Without slicing my fingers. And then over here. This is all done freehand, folks. <laughs> I'm doing this all by eye here, so I'm not going to a big deal, but um, you don't have to be perfect with this here. Okay. And that will fill any void as far as that part goes. Same thing with here. Same thing. Be careful. Um, you just want to go like this here. All right. Okay. I guess this box is a little, it's pre owned, but you know what? When I tape it up, it'll look pretty decent. That's why I use the brown tape. Okay. Uh, hopefully, the only thing I get a little concerned is with this, folks, is when I'm sending these things out. Um, you know, you might want to uh, 
you always hope and pray to God that it gets to the buyer in one piece. I always, I know I do my due diligence, but I always worry about the couriers, you know, how they're going to send it out. <laughs> and that's the part that always gets me nervous because I know, I know how I send it out. If this does come back or the buyer gets it, it came back damaged, then again, I, I really need to know from the courier how it got damaged. You know, uh, a lot of people, a lot of them probably won't attest to it and say, well, I dropped it off the truck or whatever. Well, you know, my brother brought a good point that I don't know, I guess with the, we are talking about that stuff there, you know, about selling electronic stuff, and he brought a good point. He said, you know, maybe when you send stuff out electronic, you should put a label on it. Because um, they, you know, the Postal Service, they probably scan things, which, which I'm sure they do. Uh, they scan stuff, you know, to make sure that the item, the item is getting there, and, you know, it's, it's, they say what it is supposed to be, right? And, uh, he brought a good point out that, you know, maybe you might want to put stickers on there that say electronics, you know, or something like that. Like, I did the one with the glass there, I did the, the one for the, um, the, the lamp. I put glass on it, put two stickers on there, like I showed you in a previous video. Well, I, I didn't show you complete. I'm waiting for the person to pay me. The person pay yet on that. So, um, you know, that's what I'm waiting for. That's why I didn't put the labels. I got the labels already on there. I put the glass sticker labels on there and stuff. So... Um, we'll see how that goes. Okay. Now, you notice I went over with the clear tape. Okay. The I used the um, brown tape over here. I used the brown tape for the, and I got a bag stuff over here. Uh, the brown tape is kind of like the tape that I like to use because it kind of like masks certain things up. You know, it kind of like keeps everything in check. You know, you could, if you got markings on a box, you can cover it with the, with the, with the brown tape. Well, apparently, you, use a, you can use a lot of this stuff, too. I mean, that's why when I go to Walmart, uh, one day at the, store, the, uh, the dollar store, they don't sell brown tape. They only sell clear. At least the micro, at least the micro dollar store does. That's why I end up going to Walmart and buying the uh, tape from there. Okay. So, but uh, what I like about the brown tape is you could always kind of like, you know, mask things up, like make it look nice, you know. You could always trim it like here, you know. The box is a little too big, so I could just trim it over here a little, you know. Just don't have to use so much tape doing this, you know, so like that. Now people might say, well, it's a box, we'll make a big thing over it, but I like to, you know, make it look somewhat decent, you know what I'm saying? So that's just the way I like to do things, folks. And, uh, you know, that's the way, I, that's why I like to do things. I don't know, that's just me. <laughs> um, I like to make sure things look good and try to, you know, you're making a name for yourself, so you want to try to, you know, make it look as presentable, make it look as presentable as possible. Okay, so you tape it up. All right, put the tape over here. I don't like to leave open ends. Now this box is pre-owned, so I'm gonna fix it with the craft tape or brown tape. Make it look nice. I'll try it so anyway. I don't like leaving open ends because I'm always thinking like if it's if it's rainy weather or something and you know the courier whatever the letter carrier is bringing it dropping it off um, it doesn't look you know messed up like that so I like to always cover up the ends I like to reinforce the box especially if it's old you know if it's a pre-owned box it's old you want to reinforce it you want to make sure that the box looks good it's presentable um, remember it is your name on there you know like that. Your representatives, you're trying to build a brand, and uh, believe it or not, some people uh, may be sticklers that way, judging by how they receive the item. If it came in, you know, I hear, I hear stories that people like to, um, I don't know how true it is, but I heard people say, yeah, I heard in some of the YouTube guys that sometimes people will use cereal boxes to uh, mail things out. Uh, me, I, me personally, I would never do that. Um, boxes are not. That, I mean, I'm frugal, but I am not that frugal where I'm going to uh, use a cereal box to, you know, send something out. You know what I'm saying? Like that. I'm not I'm not going to do that. That's not going to happen. Not with me anyway. But uh, there are people out there that uh, do stuff like that. Now, you're probably wondering why I'm getting a little fussy with the corners here because I want to make sure that this is sealed. This this printer, folks, is heavy. It is a very heavy To me, it's a heavy printer. All right? And I think my tape gun is going offline because I can tell the way that tape just came out here. 
What's the thing with these tape guns here? All right. And ready. So we got that taped up there. Let me just take the bottom here. I know. Go through a lot of tape, right? I know. Well, it's cheap enough, but even though it's cheap enough, you don't want to waste it. You know, tape only where it needs to be taped. Don't go, don't go crazy with it. I just don't like to leave in open corners. Okay, now, one last thing here. I don't need anything going across there, but I am going to get one over here where the open is. Okay, I think that about does it. If this thing opens up, uh, then kudos to them. Who opened it? It didn't open it that way. I'm going to move this stuff to the side here. Um, I don't have the shipping label on here, but I am going to put my stickers on, like I told you guys. Um, I do have these printed up here, Fragile Handle with Care. So I will put one of these up here on this. And I do have my Please Do Not Drop Labels. Okay. Uh, I was watching one of these things, uh, these guys on YouTube. Um, I don't know who it was. I don't remember. I'm not going to mention names if I do know. Uh, they were talking about people saying, like, do labels help out, putting them on there and stuff like that. You know what? I look at it this way. You know, as far as the validity in that in regards to, you know, whether or not labels help out or not, I look at it this way. As the buyer, and you're receiving this item, uh, I, I would think, I would think that you would want to have that on there, whether whether you want it or not, I mean, like, you know, whether you think it's going to do anything or not for your business or not, I would think it's something that it's worth having, you know. Uh, I think so, anyway. Now, I could print labels up. I know my latest video I told you I printed these labels. You see here, the handle with KF, fragile, but do not drop or bend. Oh, and you know what I just realized, folks? This. This is a, you know what, this is a good example as to what what happens when you start rushing? Um, I gotta put this back in the box. But anyway, I'm not worried about that right now because that there, I just put a little slit here and I slide it in here. I'm not worried about that. But what the thing I want to talk about is um, when you have something like this fragile, get yourself a sharpie marker, black, red, white, whatever. Usually a red one's better. Um, I usually have a red one here, and I like to put on the box this side up. Okay, you put it oblong, you can do it on the opposite direction. You don't have to write the whole box on. You don't have to write it on every corner. And then just write on the other side up. Okay. Now, whether the post office gets it or not, and they put the but they put it on the bottom like that, it does it whatever. I'm not gonna you know, it is what it is. You know, the thing is you're doing your due diligence by getting this stuff by doing this stuff, you know? Um, I think, to me, I just want to put a little piece of tape over here. This is from the old box. That's another thing, too, folks. If you're using an old box, make sure, make sure that that box is pretty well secure um, on the bottom. This one, here, I just like to go over once with this, but on the other side, because I don't know how good, I don't know how good the tape, you know, the uh, how the tape may be on here. So let's go one over here. Yeah, my tape gun. My tape gun over here, it kind of like shimmied over here. I don't know why, but it did. I'm going to use this here anyway. I'm going to, try to, I'm going to utilize I don't want to waste tape. This tape, even though you say it's only a buck, I don't want to waste that much of it. All right. And just, just go over like that. Yeah, this, way, like that. this way something does happen. At least it's protected. Always check the sides. Now, on this one here, I notice the sides here look like they're pretty freighted. On the, on the used box... You're going to probably use a lot of tape, um, just trying to retape the sides. The reason why I'm doing it with this on this particular thing is because it is a heavy printer. I don't know much it weighs. i got to get my digital scale. I bought one of those Accutex, that, uh, Accutex scales, folks, and it's pretty good. I like it. It's pretty right on the money, and, um, you know, it does a good job. It's right on the money. I like it, Accutex. Uh, but anyway, that's what we got going on. You've seen how I packaged up my um, printer. Now, the test of faith is when we send it out, we'll see uh, if the buyer gets it in one piece. Hopefully in one piece and not pieces. But I will talk to you soon, guys. I hope this video helped. Again, if you like what I do with these videos, please subscribe. Let's have you a subscriber. If you, want, if you think it was helpful in any way, you got something out of it, a little something out of it, please give it a thumbs up. I'll uh, talk to you in the next video, guys. Take it easy. Bye.